I improved my SAT score by over 100 points in just two weeks. And it was so much in such a little amount of time that the college board actually suspected me of cheating. So here's what I did. I took the SAT a total of three times. The first time I scored a 1350, which was broken down into a 650 in reading and writing and a 700 in math. Essentially what I did to prepare for that test was I took a couple of practice SATs and I scored 1400s on both of them, low to mid range. So I thought I was good to go. By the time the test came around, I was super nervous. Like I was literally shaking. I was quivering in my boots. It, it was pretty crazy. My hands were just like not functionable. And it was not a good experience at all, which was actually pretty weird because I'm usually a pretty calm test taker. I don't ever get nervous or stressed. So that was actually my first experience getting super stressed during a test. And so I think that affected my score and I did not get the 1400 I wanted. After that, I was super determined to get a 1400 on the SAT. So I studied my butt off the whole summer between my junior and senior year. And after I took the test, I was pretty confident that I was gonna be getting a 1400. I felt really good about myself after the test. I took it with all my friends. They all thought it was super easy. And so two weeks after the scores were released, I was expecting a 1400, maybe even a 1500. My hopes were high and I got a 1390. So I did improve on both sections equally actually, but not nearly as much as I wanted to. I was off by a hair and I was devastated. I was debating whether to go test optional because this was right after COVID. So a lot of colleges were doing test optional. So I didn't actually have to submit test scores. So I was gonna go down that route, but I actually didn't. And the reason why is just because I couldn't help but think that test optional, at least for my year, was just essentially saying that I wasn't good enough to get a test score that I was proud of, a test score that I would actually want to submit to schools. Yeah, so I just couldn't let that slide, you know what I mean? So I had to take it again. But by then, my senior year actually started. So school was in progress and it made it a lot more difficult to actually study. But I was going to take a different approach to studying this time. Uh, the second test, all I did was really Khan Academy. I used a lot of Khan Academy to prepare and I took a lot of practice tests, which I got 1400s on consistently. I think I even got one 1500. So I was surprised to say I got a 1390 to say the least. But for this next test, I was like, screw the practice tests, Khan Academy, it's not working. I was going to try a different method. So I ordered a few textbooks online on Amazon. So I'll link those down below if you guys want to use those because those actually really helps. I didn't even finish the textbooks. So I can only imagine how good I would have done if I actually finished them and applied that knowledge on practice tests. But yeah, I gave up on the practice tests. I kind of just went straight into these textbooks that I bought and I had to wait a week because sadly I do not have Amazon Prime. Don't make fun of me. I wanted those Fortnite skins, but yeah, my parents didn't allow it. So I had to wait the full shipping. It ended up taking around a week. And so I only had two weeks to actually prepare for my third, which was my final SAT score. And yeah, it, it was pretty stressful. I didn't think I would be able to do what I did, but I was very diligent. I came home after school, did not hang out with friends. I didn't play games and I just studied. I did homework and then I studied for the SAT all the way until I went to sleep for like basically every day for two weeks, every, every single section. The last weekend, or I think it was the day before the test, I took a practice test. And that was the only practice test I took before my third test. I honestly didn't feel very good about that test. I put a lot of work and knowledge that I consumed into it. So I felt good about that. I finished every single section in time. But it didn't feel easy or hard. So yeah, I wasn't really looking forward to seeing my score. But by the time the two weeks came up, I was actually very excited to see my score. I really wanted to see how I did. All my friends in school had their scores come out. So everybody was talking about their SAT scores. And so I was checking mine. And mine actually was not there. 
So I was worried for a second. I thought, you know, maybe mine would just come tomorrow, like, you know, the day after. And it did not. And it didn't come the day after that. So I was starting to become really worried. I started really looking into it. And it sounded like there were really only two options. The college board either lost my test or something went wrong. So I would just not receive a score. Or two, they suspected somebody of cheating inside the room because of a drastic score increase, which I believe to be me. And because of that, they're going to actually check your work, make sure you did not cheat on the test and you took it fairly. So obviously I did not cheat. So my score did eventually come out four days later. I know that doesn't sound like a long time, but it sure felt like a very, very long time. And yeah, I ended up getting... A 1510 and the 1510 was broken down into a 730 in reading and writing and a 780 in math so obviously I was devastated again I did not score a 1400 <laughs> sorry bad joke but this was obviously super good news this was the final test before my college applications were due so it was actually pretty stressful in context and for that test, it was past LA and I live south of LA. So it was a pretty long drive. I had to drive for over an hour. And the SAT is actually taken pretty early in the morning. I forget exactly which time, but I had to wake up around like five. So I was pretty tired during the test as well. So for me to get over 1500 was pretty phenomenal, especially because that wasn't even what I was really aiming for. But I was thrilled. Now, I scored in the 99th percentile for both sections, which I'm pretty proud of. That's pretty good, especially because I kind of pulled that off in just two weeks. So I'll definitely link those books down below. And I'll also link the calculator I used down below because the graphing calculator I used, if you don't have a graphing calculator, you definitely, definitely need one. But those things are insane because you can download formulas and really just put anything into it. They really assist you. You don't need to memorize as much. And yeah, those things can come in clutch. Obviously there is a no calculator portion, so you should know how to do everything without it, but it can really help. I would also recommend that you guys take the actual SAT multiple times. So I would sign up for multiple dates. The reason being that, like I said in the first test, I was very stressed out. I was super nervous and it's just not who I am as a test taker. So especially for you guys who get nervous and you get worried during tests, I would definitely recommend planning to take more than one just because the stress itself could lower your score. Say you even do breach a 1500, but you want a 1550 plus. I think stress could really make the difference. Like it can make a big difference. I think that's one of the big reasons why I improved so much was not so much that I got smarter, but more that I was just more comfortable with the test because now is my third time taking it. And for those of you who are always taking AP classes, honors classes, and you're in advanced math like I was, you are actually probably going to find yourself struggling in, in an opposite direction on the test. And this is what I mean. For math, I was way ahead of the concepts that were on the SAT. So I was taking the SAT my the end of my junior year and the beginning of my senior year, right? And the stuff that was on the SAT, I learned back in eighth and ninth grade. So it's been years before I even touched math similar onto the SAT. So not only do you kind of forget stuff, but you, you quickly remember and you know how to do it. My biggest problem was that I had an ego, especially going into the math portion, because that is my strong suit in terms of subjects. And so I just never read, like completely read each question. I wanted to finish the sections fast. Obviously the math comes, comes last. So I'm more tired, I'm drained. I just wanna get the test over with. I wanna get out of there. So on practice tests, on the real deal, I would just read the numbers, read the question, you know, the last sentence figure out what I'm solving for, and I would just go for it. But oftentimes the SAT is hard because it's trying to trick you, not because it's just hard. So you actually do have to think. The SAT is a skill of its own, and so 
you know, after I started reading the questions all the way through, it happened to become a lot easier and I did a lot better on the math portion. Also, just read everything. I know that sounds obvious, but I do know other people, especially for the reading portion, they run out of time. So what they do is they just don't read the whole section. You should read every single passage, full thing through. You should also be reading the little blurb at the top read the context of the situation, read the passage full thing through. What I did, my strategy for the reading section, although I'm not a strong reading or writing test taker, I was essentially reading the questions first because the questions go in order most of the time, except for like the main passage deals, those are always at the end. But when it's like line references and just specific questions, they're in order of the passage. So you'll find the answers line up with the questions. So you should be always just answering questions as you read the passage, rather than just read the passage and then answer the questions. Cause then oftentimes you either zoned out while reading because you woke up at 5 AM and now you're super tired or because you just weren't looking for the right information, right? Cause oftentimes the questions are oddly specific, but that that's a great way to do well on the reading section. Obviously, if you're strong in reading, then that's just a plus for you. Good for you, I guess. Also, I'm a pretty slow reader, so it would be very wise of you guys, if you are slow readers as well, to practice reading fast. And I practice on everything, books, text messages, captions on TikTok, signs on the road in the freeway, any article that you're reading, any textbook that you're reading, any test that you're taking in class for school, read fast, like learn how to read fast and consume all the information and be laser focused. Last part, the grammar section. The grammar section is often considered the easiest, although that's what I did the worst on. So if you guys really Take in these textbooks that I'm gonna share to you guys, go through them, you'll learn all the grammar rules, take practice tests, and you're supposed to be able to get 100% on the grammar section every single time. And technically the math, because those are very just hardcore rules that if you learn them and then you practice them, you eliminate dumb mistakes, because I made a lot of stupid mistakes, to be honest. And if you're able to just practice, you eliminate those you will do much better on the test without actually really like becoming a smarter person. The SAT score really isn't about how smart you are. It's, it is a skill of its own. The SAT is a skill. So you might be a very good test taker at school, but I found myself really struggling on the SAT compared to other people. And yeah, that's what really helped. You just practice, you figure out the SAT itself. But despite all of that information, I am now going to be attending a UC this fall, which the UCs, none of them even allow you to submit test scores. They're not even test optional, they're, they're test blind. So after all of that work, my SAT didn't even matter. Don't really worry about it too much. There's always test optional for at least you guys who are watching this video when it's uploaded. Maybe that'll change in the future. But for you guys who can take advantage of test optional, use it. I know plenty of people who've gotten into schools without taking test scores but if you can't get a good score it'll help you in the long run so i say try your best but if you can't make what you want happen it's not the end of the world don't freak out you can still get into the schools you want to and just because you get over 1500 doesn't mean you'll get into the schools that you want to prime example me if you haven't watched my college rejection video make sure to watch that but my name is evan funston i ultimately increased by 120 points in two weeks on the SAT. Peace out.